All right, good afternoon, everybody, and thanks for sticking around uh, to listen to me talk about a species kind of near and dear to my heart, one that I think is a little bit underappreciated, doesn't get quite the uh, research attention perhaps that it might. Uh, it's the Texas River Cooter, Pseudomys texana, and it's not like they're not trying to get our attention. This is what you commonly see within the range of Texas River Cooters. There are 13 gathered together out basking and a couple of more heads that are in the water. Uh, and so I put together this graph of how many I've seen every time I've set up my spotting scope or pulled out my high powered binoculars. And I average 4.4 Pseudomys texana per count when I do this. If I see the species at all, if I take away these zero counts when I'm unlucky, I'm averaging 7.5 Pseudomys texana per count because sometimes I'm seeing numbers in the teens or the 20s or the 30s, or there was at one time I saw 97 texana basking together in one spot. Some more photos of uh, aggregations of texana. They're also a rather a large species, a large herbivorous species. So they make up a lot of turtle biomass in, in addition to their uh, abundance. Now, this photo takes me back, oh, this seems like this was a millennium ago. Back in 1999, I took four students from my community college in uh, Western Kentucky down to Texas to study Graptomys versa in the South Llano River and Pseudomys texana. We were catching about three Pseudomys texana for every one Graptomys versa that we were actually after. But uh, we had very good success and after uh, a couple of weeks we decided we wanted to take a day off and go down south a little bit to uh, uh, just to see something else. So we heard about this place where you can actually drive on part of a river on the bedrock uh, of the river and we went there. And we also stopped at a little river called the Frio River where we saw some Texana in the distance and I swam out there and dove down into a little hole uh, three or four meters deep and I managed to catch a couple of them. As I brought these turtles uh, up to the surface and over to the shore, I shook the hands of each of my four students and said, congratulations, that's uh, your first publication. And here it is, a little herp review note uh, saying that we had caught uh, Pseudomys texane, and here's one that we had caught in uh, Real County, part of the Nueces River drainage, a river drainage they had not been reported from previously, although there was one specimen I found out about uh, through further research from Uvalde County, south of where we were, and that uh, anywhere in Uvalde County would have to be part of the Nueces drainage as well although there's no information on where exactly that specimen was captured. Well, as time has gone on, uh, a lot of sources that are available these days uh, have not included the Nueces drainage. So here's a little pamphlet you can find as a PDF online from the Texas Parks and Wildlife that says uh, that we find the species in the Brazos and the Colorado and Guadalupe and San Antonio River drainages. Uh, Herps of Texas says they're in the Colorado, the Brazos, the Guadalupe, and San Antonio River drainages. There's Real County in my record, and there's the Uvalde County record from wherever in Uvalde County that one specimen had been collected earlier. Uh, TexasTurtles.org, same sort of thing, Brazos, Colorado, San Antonio, I think, including the Guadalupe. They do converge right before they go into the ocean. Uh, and so there's uh, Real County and Uvalde County, uh, but no mention of the noises up there. Uh, Buhlman et al. in 2008 uh, did not mention the, uh, uh, the Noesis River system, Colorado, Brazos, Guadalupe, and San Antonio again. Uh, Next up, uh, Ernst and Lovitch do mention the Nueces River. They have a misspelling here, but I'm glad to report that in other parts of the volume in the Apollonia spinifera account, they have Nueces uh, spelled correctly, but at least they're mentioning it here, which is good. Uh, Dix Dixon's uh, latest and last edition of his Amphibians and Reptiles of Texas included the 
the Rayall County uh, locality that we established. Uh, and then the uh, Peterson Field Guide, though, that came out four years ago, does not mention the Nueces River again. That same year, though, in 2016, Hibbets and Hibbets published their uh, Texas Turtles and Crocodilians Field Guide, and they do mention the Nueces River, and they say that uh, Texana is found in the Frio and Sabinal uh, rivers, which are tributaries of the Nueces, but it's apparently absent from the Nueces River itself. And so that got my attention got me thinking about these animals because I thought many times since 1999 about uh, the, the extent of their distribution in the Nueces River system. Uh, I found them at one spot, but uh, other museum uh, localities have not shown up to my knowledge since then. So for spring break this year, I decided to travel down to South Texas, uh, not knowing that this was going to be the last spring break traveling I would do for perhaps quite a while. Uh, but I traveled down to South Texas and I was able to find four more localities for Texana uh, and get good photographs with my uh, Nikon Coolpix. This is the Frio River in northern Uvalde County. So this uh, uh, is now a Uvalde County specimen where we know where it came from. Uh, also in Uvalde County, the Sabinal River and a small impoundment of uh, the river uh, that seems to be teeming with Texana. And then upstream of, of that in, into western Bandera County, a couple of other localities on the Sabinal River. This is a little juvenile I spotted driving past his habitat at 55 miles an hour. And I said, whoops, there's a turtle, jumped out, got my picture. And then further upstream, uh, a couple of more Texana uh, as well. I spent a lot of time on the trip, though, on the uh, Nueces River proper, the main stem Nueces River, and as I'll show you in a moment, had no success there. So here's what the uh, distribution map actually looks like for Pseudomys Texana. Uh, the green blotch covers all the areas in the Brazos River drainage, and several of its larger tributaries where Texana has been uh, found. Yellow is for the Colorado River system and several tributaries of the Colorado. The two shades of orange, this is the Guadalupe and the San Antonio, which join right down here before they flow into the Gulf. Uh, and here's the little section of the Nueces. Here's the Nueces proper, the main stem, but on the Frio and Sabinal rivers is where I've found them. We also have one record that seems to be probably associated with this San Bernard River right here, which uh, is a potentially interesting little river system in, in South Texas that uh, hardly ever gets mentioned. And we have two records here in the blue that are associated with streams of the Lavaca River system flowing into uh, the ocean here. Uh, so uh, nobody mentions these two smaller drainages. Well, here's our, our state of knowledge of turtles in the Nueces River drainage from museum specimens that I've looked up on VertNet, my own sightings and the photo vouchers that I've taken, and then also looking at iNaturalist to continue our theme this afternoon of using these uh, community science sources. Uh, so the Texana in orange only show up in Real and Bandera and northern Uvalde County in the upper reaches of the uh, uh, Frio and the Sabinal rivers, tributaries to the Nueces. Uh, out of 104 records in the upper Frio and the upper Sabinal from these three different uh, uh, data sets, about one third are Texana. So they're moderately common in the upper Frio and upper Sabinal. Looking at the main stem, main stem Nueces, here are 89 records on the main stem Nueces, not a single Texana to be found there. So this is a, a very unusual distribution, I, th I think, for a river turtle to be found in the upper reaches of some tributaries but not be found in the main stem. Of course, Texana on the main stem Brazos, the main stem 
Colorado, the main stem Guadalupe and San Antonio, they're quite common in those situations. Uh, so here's the known occupied distribution in the Frio, the known occupied distribution in the Sabinal. Here's the Nueces River angling down and it goes off the bottom of our screen. Uh, so what would account for these turtles not occurring further downstream and getting into the Nueces and, and occurring widely within the Nueces? Well, let's take a, a little section of the Frio right here and let's blow this up on Google Earth. Here somebody has built a very long driveway to a house that they built right next to the Frio River, perhaps so they could look out their back window and look at the river and maybe even so they could look out and see turtles. As of uh, January of last year, that would have been a pretty good bet to see a, a nice riverscape out the uh, back window. And here's December uh, the year before, so one month earlier. Lots of water there. But totally dry in November 2014. Same thing, totally dry December 2012. What about spring of 2012, March 2012, totally dry. Also in summer 2008, totally dry. And October 2005. So both these rivers, the Frio and the Sabinal, they're relatively permanent up at their headwaters, but they spend most of their time, most, most of any given year, uh, flowing underground at some point and not reaching the noises as an above ground habitat for turtles. Uh, the reason for this, here's the uh, uh, Frio and the Sabinal here, and here's the Noesis River angling down again over here, uh, the, uh, the two river systems are right on the edge of the massive Edwards Aquifer. Uh, so as they flow south, they, fly, they, they flow into uh, drier and drier areas. Meanwhile, over here, this is the Medina River. The Medina River relatively permanent and has Texana in it. And that's the probable source of uh, some method of colonization into the Frio and the Sabinal rivers. So what ought we be saying about the distribution of Pseudomyces texana? Well, they're in the Brazos and various tributaries of the Brazos. They may be in the San Bernard. Somebody in Texas needs to go give that a good look-see uh, to get uh, more information there. Uh, they're certainly widespread in the Colorado River system and its tributaries. Uh, the little Lavaca River system, uh, there, there apparently are two records for streams of that drainage. We could use some more information about what exactly is going on there. And then they're widespread in the Guadalupe and San Antonio. But don't forget the upper Frio and the upper Sabinal, which are part of the Nueces drainage. Apparently, they're not able to dispersed down into the Nueces itself, have not been able to, because we have uh, uh, 89 records of turtles with, uh, without a single Texana. Again, when Texana is found, you typically find them in pretty good uh, abundance. So I think, they're, they, uh, I think that Hibbets and Hibbets really had it right, absent from the Nueces main stem, only found uh, or restricted to the Frio and Sabinal. With that, I'll uh, take any questions that you might have. If I can 